All right, so just a few more. These are these are good ones. Um, the gauze is, I'm not going to do it yet, but I do want to look at it and talk about it just for a second. Gauze will end up looking like these. This one is a, you can see the actual pattern of the gauze itself. It's a fabric, basically. This is it being pulled apart. This is a piece that's a larger area. And then I want you to start thinking, what could this be? So when you get into areas like this, you could almost see this is more plant-like. This one could even be like a skin of a creature. There's another beautiful gauze. All right, take the ball away from the dog. Quit. Sorry, y'all. Okay. <laughs> All right, then uh, more of that same fabric. I'm stuck to that one. Look at these colors. I think that's more of that same one. Here's a really pretty one. So this is gauze. I guess I can turn it where you can read the word on there. Or we call it cheesecloth. And um, basically, it comes in a really large piece. This right here is about seven bucks at Lowe's. You're going to have to go to Lowe's for this. Lowe's or Home Depot. I'm pre I know for sure this. I bought this at Lowe's. So it's called cheesecloth. You can't go and get medical gauze anymore because they don't do this anymore. With uh, this is actually used for making cheese. The curds are squeezed through this, and the juice stays. Juice comes out, and the and the um, curds stay in, and then eventually they change to to cheese. But this is why it's cheesecloth, because it's it's cotton. And I've just opened up that one piece that I cut off is really really long. And so you can take it and just use it like that. Or you can spread it. And I wish I could change. Let me see. Mm, looking for something dark. Nope, I didn't think this through. But basically, oh, hang on. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Here, we'll do it this way. So you can kind of see the texture of it. That paper was making it impossible. So you can spread it. You could change it. I had one young lady one year. She took and she manipulated this cheesecloth to be a row of trees. Like the edge of it was like they were branches and they branched out and it was flat gorgeous. I wish that I had taken a picture of it because I did not. And then I was very sad because, well, she took it with her and I never got to, and I've not bothered to duplicate um, so that's cheesecloth, and we're going to play with that. And we also have alcohol, and this might be a little harder to come by, just regular rubbing alcohol. Um, when I do rubbing alcohol, I always make sure that I have an extra thing of water because I do not want the alcohol in my paints because it will mess up my paints. So what I do is when I'm working with it, I will take my paints, play with them here, right, but when I uh, actually play with the actual alcohol, I will make sure that I wash my brush out twice. That way I can't contaminate my actual paints. And I really do try to, whatever colors I plan on using, I try to get them down here. And that way I won't have a problem when it, because uh, I do not want alcohol in my actual paints. It messes them up. All right, but it's really a cool effect. But I don't want to do that yet. I'm going to push that up and kind of hide it. All right, what we're going to do next is actually bursting. Now, bursting is, a, is one that I expect you to practice at least four times, if not five or six or seven. So here's what you're going to do first. You're going to take and get your paper wet. So I'm just going to, well, I probably need a color here. I'll put a little color so you can see it. So I'm putting a little color here. You can see the green going on. 
I've got a dog that's decided he's wide awake and wants to play. <laughs> All right, I am pulling and lifting a little of the water off. With bursting, it's a lot like bleeding. Let's try some here. If I put two colors together, say this blue next to the green, these two will bleed together. But what I want is that burst. The problem is that's actually a burst. These are little bursts. If I have too much water, it disappears like this one. It just kind of just goes everywhere. So there's a lot of water here. You can see it. I wanted to kind of show you how much water is on there. Okay. So we've got a nice little burst there. This is a beautiful little burst. Uh, that might be a little much because it's still wet. So let's try it again. And I wanted to do these first before I didn't, I didn't want to have everything wet on us. So I'm going to put some water here. And this time I'm going to dry it up a little bit. And you can even, you know, just... Uh, get a little sheen of water so you don't really want to puddle but you don't want it to dry up either so you got to have a nice medium between the two so I'm going to try to burst into that light white <laughs> crazy dog I'm trying to get it to burst right into there playing right along that edge you guys can see it doing it. I'm going to go for darker and see if we can actually see it going in. If it dries too quickly, see, I almost didn't have enough water. See? Oh, so now it's not moving at all. So it's just stopped. Okay. That's okay. I'm going to lift and create like a little landscape here. I'm just going to take out some pieces, and it's kind of creating a little landscape. Okay, now we'll try again. Not so much water taken off. All right, here we go. We're going to try again. So water, you're going to have to do this a few times because I've been doing this a long time, and I still, each time I start playing with bursting, I know that it, you know, each time you work with it, the paper is different. The copy paper will be different from regular paper. Um, you just got to learn to play with it and see where you can get it to do it. Bursting. Right now I've got it bursting two directions. Try another color in it. See if I can show you guys. I should have done the darker. I'm doing the darker just so you can see it. Too much water and your burst will become huge blobs, but they're actually, that's not too bad. Those are kind of pretty. And I can go back in again and lift. So you can see this is fairly wet. And now, ooh, does that look start looking like trees maybe? Right along that edge? So I might, ooh, I don't want to mess that one up. I'll play with this one then. Right on this edge over here, I didn't like him anyway. I'm going to try to make me a little tree. And so when I'm talking about playing, I was suggesting that you guys play a little bit. And what I found was you guys did just, you did beautifully. You did just like I showed you. But I didn't see a lot of extra play. You didn't do two more or three more examples than I did. You just did exactly what I did. And so I'm hoping that you're going to start to begin to play a little bit. All right, here we go again. We're going to try again. And this time I am going to think about a sky. I'm going to actually think about a blue sky. So I'm going to throw in some blue. And this time I'm actually just laying that color down. Just going to lay some blue down. And then I think I'm going to burst into that blue. Maybe a shadow of a tree. So I'm going to go down here into my palette. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of black to it. The dog is berserk. He is just <laughs> playing tonight. That's okay. I got a little too much blue. Hang on, y'all. All right. There. I want it. I want it to be kind of a dark blue. Now, I may have let this dry too so too long, playing with my color. Maybe you'd want to get your color ready because I can see 
that this is not going to burst. Let me get it over here where you can see. You see where I'm trying to show you there's, there's no, it's already soaked in. This one's still wet. But that one, in just a short time that I mixed a darker blue that I wanted to use, it's already dried up. So, what do I do? Well, I think I'm going to go in here, clean my brush, and I'm going to try to lift some white clouds up out of here. That's a dog hair. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you, Nash. Appreciate it, buddy. There we go. <laughs> he has got things flying around here. He's having a good time. I can move it around, maybe think about what would a cloud look like. drag it around here so I'm thinking about clouds and I'm going to try to get this lower area wet again because I am still going to attempt to burst all right here we go it's still wet and you can see that it's slightly wet ah get in there. Oh, there you can see the water okay I don't want to mess around so I got to get on here I'm going to take my blue now and I'm going to try to burst right into this edge of my sky with some well it looks like grass maybe in shadow like a yeah it's kind of looking like grass possibly um, let's see if I can go a little darker ooh how about brown added to it instead of the black this is called playing and that's what I thought you guys would get but I, I was wrong no one played so now I'm gonna play with some color I'm gonna play with ooh what if I add a little brown into that mix and I just tap it along here what do I get what happens to the burst does it keep happening yeah I got some really nice little strings there there's a little bit too much water here, so I'm going to lift it. And so I've got a little area of far away, and then this area is closer. And maybe I want to burst right into this area. So I'm going to go with my darker because, see, if I think about it, if I were actually thinking about this as a scene, I've got black and, and, and the brown mixed together, I might actually have a silhouette of something right along here so I'm just going really dark and I'm trying to get my little grassy bursts to kind of come up that's kind of neat looking and that's what I want to do I want to get these bursts happening so you're gonna to have to practice these I got too much water and all my bursts are disappearing it's like bummer so you really have to play a little bit. You got to keep practicing. Let's try a little one here. Too much water. Got to hit just the right amount. That's too wet. Don't want to mess around too long or it'll get dried up. Let's try the green. And that's green bursting onto um, the white paper. I'm just going to do some fun little bursts out here by themselves. And this is really just playing. Let me see if I can get them closer. You can see. trying to turn it but there we go this one's disappearing down here too wet too dry too wet too dry ah so you've got to keep playing that's it that's if you don't practice if you don't play with it you're not gonna get it so you're just gonna have to keep doing it until you figure out the exact amount of water the amount exact amount of time to get the effect that you want and so it's been a while since I did any bursting, so I'm, I'm struggling for it. Let's 
Justin's rattle on that. I'm just dabbing it just a little bit to create kind of a texture. You're going to have to practice this. We are actually going to use this. I need you to become proficient at doing these different kinds of bursts. Some with too much water, some with not quite enough water, uh, too much water, just enough water. This is beautiful. These are really nice little bursts. They're controlled. I need you to know what it is you're doing when you, when you go in there so you have a little more control because we are going to be using this. All right, let's play with the gauze. I am going to use a wet on wet. So again, I'm just putting the water on here. I'm going to take the gauze. Well, I'm going to try to find my end. There we go. I was, this is the end I was ratting up. And I'm just going to give it a, some playing with here real quick. Add some more water to it so it's really good and wet and down. I want it down. And again, this is one of those effects that you're going to leave alone. And you got to leave it like for an hour or two. So for you guys, leave it overnight. It would be easier. And now I'm just going to add some color to it. And look what happens. It goes only... It follows the line of the gauze itself. It's pretty cool. I'm going to lose a lot of water so you can see now. Right here where I've got lots of it all built up, this is probably going to be a solid area. And this is what happened right here with the black. There's solid area because it was so thick with the gauze. But if you spread it out, you're going to get, your colors are going to spread out. I'm just doing it real quick. All right. So that's gauze, and it can be really manipulated. You can make it into a tree. You could make it into, um, you just do crazy stuff with them. I'll get closer so you all can kind of see. All right. And then alcohol. And here again, I'm going to play out of here. I do not want to get alcohol in my color, so I'm going to get, it, get some color on here. Alcohol only works if you have a wet area. And I did just a wet on dry just now to show you that a wet on dry will work fine. And then I'm going to go over here and go wet on wet. You do, it has to be wet in order for this, pro, this um, technique to work. So you have to have water on here. It has to be wet. So that's wet on dry. The colors are pretty wet. And what I'm going to do now, I've got a black over my red. And then I'm going to dry my brush off a little bit. Get some of this alcohol. And I need it in a cap. Preferably in a cap or some kind of container where you can control it. Okay. And then you just put it on there. I'm going to go with a smaller brush so you all can see what it does. It pushes away the color. So you can draw with it. You can write with it. You could spatter with it, and I'm going to do the old trick technique where you tap it over the top of your finger, and it does the droplets. So this is a form of stippling I didn't show you before. It does seem to make a little color of a solid color in the center like that dot did. Anyway, alcohol is really cool. It's fun to play with. It pushes the water around. And then you have to leave it alone again because if you mess with it, you'll... 
I'm just messing with it all the way over to here. I want to show you what happens when it's kind of dry, though. So over here it's dry. It is working, but nowhere near the intensity that it was doing over here. Still pretty, though. So wherever it's still wet, it really works well. All right, that's it. Now, again, wash your brush out doubly. Make sure it's good and clean. If you have to, cover, close your paints so you don't actually need to go into them when you're playing with the alcohol. And that's it. Y'all have fun.